Kinsey, welcome to the Savvy Cast. I'm so glad that you're here today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited about this. You want to know something? This was actually my first podcast I've ever been on. Okay. I'm so surprised because you were, <laughs> you were a fabulous Instagram presence. And I was just like, oh my goodness, she is so savvy. I've got to have her. Oh, I'm honored that I'm the first. Well, you will, this won't be the last. You are first of all, and everyone watching or listening, I just you popped up. I don't know if it was the Explorer page, but you popped up. And first of all, you're just as cute as can be. And you're also fairly close to me. I'm in Birmingham. You're in Atlanta. You have on your Instagram what I love about Instagram, finding people who share helpful information. I always leave wanting to try something or learning something. And that's why I wanted to bring you on because I think that's what my listeners on the Savvy Cast or the viewers like. They like to walk away more educated and informed. And that's what you're going to help us with today. So, Kenzie, I have already introduced you, but can you tell us how did you get 15 years of experience in style? What did that look like? Yeah. So, ever since I was a little girl, like from the first time I understood what the word career me meant or just passion in general. I've always kind of had this internal knowing of what I wanted to do. I think that some people are born with that. Some people, they struggle with it. They don't really know. And it takes, you know, trying out different jobs before they figure out. But for me, it was always very clear that I wanted to do something in fashion. I think that for a long time, I was really focused on the glamorous side of fashion. I thought I wanted to work for like Vogue or do something, you know, high end in runways. And I did try to do that. I went to college and got my degree in apparel design and merchandising. And while I was in college, I had to do an internship in Miami and I interned for a fashion PR company. So I got to produce runway shows for Miami Swim Week. And that was kind of my first introduction into mm. the fashion industry. And I got to kind of see the behind the scenes of what goes on for PR our gifting, you know, seating for runway shows. Um, one of my shows that I worked on was Wild Fox Couture, which was a bikini runway show. And the Kardashians were the guests there. And so we got to like walk them in and stuff. And that was like my first time feeling the celebrity side too of fashion. So ever since then, I was hooked. I was like, I love this industry. I love the fast pacedness of it. Um, and I tried different jobs throughout my career. I worked for a lingerie company. I worked doing uh, magazine styling for photo shoots, um, ad shoots for brands. I've kind of dipped my toe in a lot of different areas along with working in retail. Mm -hmm. um, and I just found that I was never fully satisfied. After working in so many jobs in fashion, whether it was doing magazine photo shoots or working in retail, working on the brand side of marketing, social media, like I really kind of dipped my toe in all different aspects of fashion. I left the industry in 20, I think it was like 2016 or 2017, um, maybe, or maybe it was like 2019. I can't remember, but I left the industry and took a job working in just brand marketing. Like it wasn't any passion at all. And I did that because I was following money. I wanted to find mm. a job that uh, paid more because it's really hard to make a lot of money in fashion, unless you're living in like, you know, New York or LA. And even mm -hmm. then it's very hard to get into. Um, and so I left and worked a job that I was completely unhappy with. And I, I kind of developed this depression that came with working in a job that I didn't truly love. And so the pandemic happened. And during this time, I was trying to rethink how I would get back into fashion, how I would kind of figure out a new career. And TikTok came about. And I started posting my first video in, on TikTok in 2021. So it was still pandemic. Mm -hmm. And I, at the time I was like helping style clients on the side, just as like a little freelance thing. And I started taking those tips that I was helping clients with and just mm -hmm. making short form videos out of them. And within three months, it completely blew up. I had a hundred thousand followers on TikTok in three months. Oh my goodness. It wow. Was, yeah, so it, it just. Since then, I haven't even been doing this for a full two years. It'll be two years in January. So yeah, so I have over 500,000 uh, followers on TikTok. I have over 300,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. and 
of almost 200,000 on Facebook. And I think what really resonates for people is that the type of content that I put out there is not to make you feel bad about yourself. I find that a lot of creators create content to be very aspirational, to almost make their lives feel like they're untouchable. And I really wanted to speak to the everyday woman. I wanted women to feel like they could come to my page, feel satisfied with the content that they're watching, feel like they've learned something and feel inspired to dress more confidently and love a style that they own or already have in their closet. And yeah, that's, that's kind of like where it all started. I'm still kind of in the beginning stages of it all. Oh my goodness. Well, that's what I loved about you is you, you, I feel good and inspired when I um, leave your, your, your page, your Instagram. Um, that, that is amazing. It shows that you have resonated with an audience and what I would just like for you to do. And a lot of this is selfish because I'm going to be using all these tips and, but I know everyone else will too, but I just went on a mad cleaning spree and literally I almost have nothing left in my closet. I've got this, when I get on something, everything goes. So I do have my jeans and I have some basics, but could you share with others who might want to know, Hey, I'm going to kick off the new year and I'm going to really build a closet that works for me. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there are things that work for individual body types, ages and stages of life. Can you start though with what every woman uh, that needs? And I guess you would call that a capsule wardrobe. Yeah. So I'm actually going to go back to what you said. I think it's awesome that you've cleaned out your closet. I think that's okay. Okay. part of the, the many step process, but I actually think the first step is to stop shopping for at least a month and get really serious about figuring out what your personal style is. Because before you clean out your closet, you need to identify what items are actually part of your authentic style versus what items are just fluff and don't make sense. And what I mean by that is when you are figuring out your personal style, it's not just like what type of fashion you like. It's what type of home decor you like. It's what type of floral design you like. What type of, you know, architecture do you like? Really think about things in your environment that can influence your style. And once you kind of have a vision board of what you want your lifestyle aesthetic to be, then your style can be a complementary reflection of whatever that might look like. So mm. for instance, I'm looking behind you and I see a beautiful home decor design, and I can already get a sense of what type of style you probably like just based off your home decor. And what a lot of people forget to do is they get this idea of just like Pinteresting outfits or looking at influencers and they'll look at one influencer and they'll be like, I love this style. And then they'll look at three others who are completely different and be like, oh, I love this. And then all of a sudden you have a wardrobe that has a bunch of things that don't make sense. And then you can't mix and match those pieces together or they don't complement one another. And you ultimately just feel confused. So I think the first step is really figuring out what is the style that I like to wear and what feels most authentic to me, not influenced by other people. That's really your first step. And then your second step is going to be going into your wardrobe and cleaning it out. And what that really means is removing pieces, one, that you haven't worn in the last year, because if you didn't wear them last spring or summer, you're not going to wear them this spring or summer. Right, right. And and then also just removing any items that don't align with that personal style that we just discussed. And then the last step is actually going to be making a list of items that are capsule wardrobe pieces. So most women have over like 150 to 300 pieces of clothing in their wardrobe, but they only wear 10% of them. And Mm. a big reason why that is, is because one, it's not aligned with their personal style, but more importantly, they're missing a lot of core basics. So they have a lot of specialty styles, but they don't have basics to mix and match them together. So we can talk a little bit about a capsule wardrobe if you want to, but I just wanted to kind of reiterate that it's so important that you understand your personal style before you do any shopping in the new year. Oh, I love that. And I am so glad you addressed the 10% because I do feel like that that's me. I feel like I wear, and like I've got in my Walmart little vest with my cuddle. I mean, and I think my age group possibly tends to lean very athleisure because we're empty nests. 
we're running errands, we're not going to business meetings typically. So, I mean, basically my life is church, uh, parties here and there, and then athleisure. But I know that everyone needs those basics. So tell us, all of us, what are the basics we really need? Like, is it white shirt, good mm -hmm. jeans? Just let us know what we need to, to look for. Yeah. So the most important basic that most women don't have in their wardrobe, or if they do, it's not good quality is a t-shirt, just a good t-shirt. And I recommend the cuts clothing t-shirt. It's by far the best t-shirt on the market. Oh my stars. Okay. Can we link to all of these Kenzie? Because yes, yes. I've got about 10 white t-shirts coming today from Saks. Mm -hmm. And all over. And I'm like, just knowing I'm going to send most of it, because it's so hard to tell. And I wish I had, I wish I'd known this before, but so where do you get these and what makes them the best? A thing I typically see with women in their wardrobe it, when it comes to a t-shirt is that it looks, the neckline looks shriveled up and that's because the wash and care that goes into a t-shirt. So even if you aren't throwing your t-shirt in the dryer, you're still going to get that shriveled up neckline because it's made of most likely a cotton material. What I find is that the best t-shirts need a little bit of spandex in them. And so mm -hmm. the ones from Cuts Clothing, I've had them for two years and I've never had a shriveled neckline. You'll have to just try it for yourself in order to like- Oh my it. goodness. It's every client I've ever given that t-shirt to or recommended it to has always emailed me and said, this is the best t-shirt I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's an amazing t-shirt. Um, so a okay. t-shirt is kind of the number one thing. And then after that, I would say a good solid button down. Now it doesn't matter if you don't have like a classic or a preppy style aesthetic, having a good button down is just an essential because you can layer it over a t-shirt. You mm -hmm. can wear it by yourself. It just has a lot of versatility. And then I would also say as far as like tops are a good quality sweater, like a good knit, whether it be a cardigan, a cashmere sweater, whatever it might be, that's always just a great basic. Um, I also think that having a trouser or some sort of nice dress pant is a great basic as well. One of my favorites is from this place called Aritzia. Um, the effortless pant is by far the best pant trouser on the market. It comes in petite, it comes in the tall. I think it goes up to a size 16 or 18. Um, and then if you're plus size, a great style would be the good American scuba pant. Um, so I could, I'll have this all oh in my Oh my goodness. Mouth. I'm taking your course, which we'll talk about that you yes. are full of, see, I've not heard of some of these brands. This is amazing. And, <laughs> and I just want to reiterate, this is why, like, I'm not in my lane when I'm in, like I can get on and say, guys, look at this from Walmart, yep. but I'm not a stylist or, but so learning from you and having these brands, this is priceless. I love this. So we'll link to all of these, but can yeah. you, can you tell us, okay. So, and you, if you're not finished, if there's something after trousers, can you just quickly touch upon how we wear the t-shirt, the white, like just the mo because I know a lot of other people may think, okay, t-shirt, I wear it with cut off denim jeans or, you know, what? I don't really know how to make a t-shirt look great. Yes. So I often say that it's, you could have the most basic outfit, whether that's a t-shirt, a pair of denim, or even like a trouser, but you add a statement shoe or a statement handbag and it completely elevates the look. So I think anytime you're wearing something super basic, utilizing your accessories and making sure that the outfit looks more elevated, even if you're layering on a sweater over your shoulders, over the t-shirt, you know, just kind of having fun with it. I think it's fine. I think where women go wrong is that they just wear the t-shirt and they don't accessorize it or they don't elevate it in any way. And that's where it starts to feel flat or boring or uninteresting for a lot of women. And they feel like their style doesn't have that like pizzazz that they see a lot of women wearing, especially on social media. So I think like just utilizing your accessories, but you want to know what the one accessory item that I never see in a woman's wardrobe? What? It's a belt. Okay. I I would agree. Now, I will say I have two Gucci belts that I invested, I saved for, a brown and a black. Yes. And Kenzie, I will say that's the only thing I think I do have that will elevate an mm -hmm. outfit, but, do, so, but, but you're saying you find most women don't have a belt. They don't have a belt. Or so they have why is that important? And which, what besides, I mean, I just wanted a Gucci. It was, I bought them when they were the rage. What are um, 
ways you would wear those and what are some of your favorites? So a belt for me is not just a belt that you wear inside your pant loops to hold up your pants. For me, a belt is an added accessory that can help to emphasize your waistline if you're wearing a dress. You can put it over a skirt, even if it doesn't have belt loops. You can just oh. place it over your skirt. You could wear a sweater and then a skirt and then layer a belt around the sweater, you know, to just emphasize your waistline a little bit more. So it has just so much versatility in your wardrobe. But I'm always so shocked when I walked in, walk into any woman's wardrobe and I'm like, where are your belts? Where are your scarves? Where are your, where are those accessories? And so I often tell women that you really need to invest the same amount of money that you're investing in shirts, in jeans, in shoes, into belts. Like your, your wardrobe should be an even split of spending. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. can you tell us, because my belts are the same, just different color, but they're more, I mean, you know, they're thicker. Are are the belts you're talking about, what is, are they different belts or are they thin or? It can be kind of whatever works for your aesthetic. I think when women hear belts worn with dresses, they think of like the big, thick belts. And I actually feel like that sometimes can be a dated way to wear the style. Mm -hmm. I actually think you can utilize just normal belts, but buy a size down smaller if you want it to fit around your waist. But you can buy them off Amazon, like just a simple circle gold belt. Like it doesn't have to, I know, I know you have the Gucci belt and those are great, but like, even if you just do like a simple basic belt, you can make an outfit look way more elevated. I even put belts around blazers. Like I'll, if it's a double breasted blazer, I'll belt it around and it just looks so chic and I'll wear it with like a lace pant or a velvet pant or something like that, you know? Um, oh my goodness. This is gold because- just to add a little piece of non-knowledgeable, you know, how this is going to help me. I bought a pink, silky, like long blazer. It's, it's like silky. And I wore it the other night, but it was boxy. And I thought, I need to have this taken up on the side. But that's all I needed was a belt, right? You can belt it, especially like if you did like a chain belt or something, because it's like a silky material, that would have looked really beautiful to have a chain belt. So having diversity in your belts with like a chain belt, a pearl belt, you know, there's so much variety out there that you can look for. Um, but having those accessories and diversity in your accessories is really important when you're trying to look more fashion forward or just more simply elevated. It doesn't, doesn't mean you have to look like you're a walking model off the runway, but you're just wanting to look a little bit more styled. Okay. You just used a term that I'm seeing a lot of influencers use, and I don't really know, like they'll maybe style some, or throw a sweater over a t-shirt and they'll say elevated basics. Tell us how you elevate. Okay, you've given us some of the basics mm -hmm. and I am going to be buying the, the t white t-shirt. Did you tell us what your favorite white button down? Did you mention that? Because we're going to link. Yeah, so it's the Banana Republic Riley 2. Oh, Banana Republic is great. Yeah, okay, it, Riley 2. It's linked all in my master class too. Like I have plus oh. size options. I have um, petite options. I have standard size options. It's all in my master class. When I see an area where there's so much knowledge that I can glean, it just gets me so excited. Okay, so once we get all of these pieces and we have our accessories, now it, are, you mentioned belts. Are there any other? Uh, okay, you also mentioned scarves. Are those still a thing? Yes, I think that scarves can. It depends on what type of scarf you want to want to use. It could be a handkerchief type of scarf, type of scarf. It could be, you know, a wool scarf that you wear. I think it's also like looking at how you're styling it as well. So a lot of women just do like an infinity scarf or something, um, or they take the scarf, and they wrap it around, uh, or they fold it, wrap it around, and like stick it in. There's so many different ways that you can style a scarf, but I actually think that just wrapping it around your neck. And then just throwing it over on one side is always like the most chic way Ooh. to wear a scarf. You don't have Audrey to like Hepburn. Yeah, you don't have to look, you know, all bundled up and whatever. But you know, that's a great way. But you did mention um the term elevated basics, and I wanted to just yes. talk about what that is. So it's kind of a buzzword right now because mm -hmm. there is a trend happening called quiet luxury, and that's basically where we're kind of leaning more into not showing as many logos like designer logos and really focusing on quiet luxury and a 
designer brand who's kind of notorious for this is called The Row. It's the brand that Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen um, created. They're a high-end luxury brand. Um, and what that means is that your style looks very simplistic, but you're utilizing pieces that feel very elevated. And what I mean by that is, for example, let's say you have on a pair of wide leg trousers and just a basic t-shirt, mm -hmm. then you add a nice belt with it, not a logo belt, but just a nice clean belt. And then you're going to add maybe a long trench coat with it. And maybe mm. you elevate it with like a pointed toe boot or you'll do a flat with it or you might do um, a heel with it. And that can instantly just look luxurious without putting a lot of effort into your look. So it's kind of giving that like really high end luxury look, but you can still do this buying things from Walmart, buying things from um, Abercrombie, places like that that are more affordable. It's all kind of about the quality of the materials mm -hmm. and making sure that you're styling it in a very elevated effortless way. Okay. I love this. Now I do want to ask you, oh, this is one of the posts that made me say, I've got to get her on my podcast. You did a post on how to wear, I don't know if you called them Mary Jane's flats. Yeah. I don't know if you have, cause I, they're on the way, the, uh, the Matisse Nova, the little flat mm -hmm. silver. I saw that and I'm like, okay, she showed me how to style this. This is awesome. If you have a, a client and that would be me that cannot wear, I cannot wear pointy toes. I can maybe wear them to take a picture, but, mm -hmm. I, and a lot of women in middle age, they have to wear a wider toe box and um, more of a flat. Can you work style around comfortable, more or orthotically correct shoes, even Absolutely. some of the sophisticated styles? Absolutely. I think one of the top recommended shoes I have for women who feel like they want to have something comfortable, but that looks elevated is a loafer. I think loafers look so beautiful and they're so chic. They go with a lot of things, but if you want something that looks a little bit more dressy, you could certainly do a mule. You could mm -hmm. also do um, ballet flats and Mary Jane's are making a comeback and they look fantastic. Um, I personally like Mary Jane's more than I do ballet flats. I think they just look a little bit more chic, but yes. You can, can you explain to the audience that may not know the difference between a ballet flat and a Mary Jane? Just yeah. So Mm -hmm. So a ballet flat doesn't have the strap across the foot, whereas a Mary Jane has a strap or multiple straps across the foot, but they're essentially the same shoe. I know because there's so many things, but can you tell us, you've told us things that we need in our closet and we're all going to, you know, refer to your, um, all your links. What are maybe even just one of the biggest mistakes, wardrobe mistakes or styling mistakes that you see just in the general population of women, just walking down the street or just clients. And you're like, I just wish everybody knew th this is a no-no. Yes. I think uh, number one is a lot of women, millennials, Gen X, boomers, um, typically wear things that the whole outfit is tight, like the entire outfit, like the jacket, the shirt, the pants, and then they have clunky shoes on. And I find that a lot of women really struggle with understanding how to balance proportions. So for mm. instance, if you're wearing something that's more fitted on top, you probably need something that's a little bit more looser on the bottom and mm. vice versa. If you're wearing something more full on top, you might go with something more slimming on the bottom. So learning how to really balance out your proportions, and this can vary depending on your body type. If you're an inverted triangle where you're you know, more broad and wide through your shoulders, then you might try to balance out the lower half of your body with like a wide leg jean or with a flare boot cut jean, something like that. Or if you're like a pear shape where you carry more weight um, and width at the lower half of your body, then you might add actually more volume to the upper half of your body just to help widen your shoulders and make your body look more balanced. But typically when I'm seeing women, um, I, I find that they really struggle to wear something that speaks to the authentic style of who they are. Mm -hmm. Everyone has that inside of them. They have a creativity. They have an essence of who they are. They have a feminine kind of aura about them. And mm -hmm. I always feel that when I see women who are not putting, not necessarily the effort into style, because I realize that 
people have busy lives. Like style is not a priority for a lot of people. But I do think that even if you are just wearing that basic t-shirt and a pair of jeans, like just really being intentional about the shoes that you're selecting with it. If it's a white sneaker, if it's a loafer, you know, it can really just elevate your outfit. I think a, a big misconception for a lot of women is that style is intimidating and that it's overwhelming and that it's mm -hmm. just too much effort. Mm -hmm. And I actually, why I started styling with Kinsey is to break that narrative and to show women that style can be something that it's, that is accessible, that's easy, that's effortless, and they can feel confident even in the most simplest of outfits. So yeah, I would I would say like just working on body proportions, but also just really prioritizing intention around style. Okay, I love that. I get a lot of questions from my midlife followers on wedding guest outfit or, you know, a more formal attire. And I just, and this may not be correct, I always say black tends to always look the most formal. Um, is that true? Like if you said, okay. If you just want to have that thing you pull out of your closet when you're a wedding guest, you know, a, a, an evening, perhaps not black tie, what would you recommend? Yeah, a little black dress is always like a great essential in your wardrobe. But I find that women, I don't know what it is. And I love helping women of a certain age who really struggle with style, because I find that a lot of women in midlife, they tend to lean towards older brands that are targeting towards them. When in mm -hmm. fact, they can shop at a lot of the more youthful brands and just rearrange or change the styling of it. You know, they don't have to show their arms. They can add like a little uh, shawl or something around their arms if they don't want to show their arms. Or they could add a belt to help emphasize their waist if it's super flowy. You know, I, I just... I want to break this idea that you have to shop at certain stores because you're of a certain age. Mm -hmm. Like my lifelong goal is to help women understand that you don't have to dress a certain way because of your age. And I think that what I love to see my, you know, my mom is in her sixties and I have, I took her on a, did her a styling makeover on her. And we wow. went into this one store and she, it was like a dress that had a slit kind of up the thigh. And she was like, Kenzie, I cannot wear this. And I was like, girl, put it on. I'm going to add a belt and I'm going to add some boots with it. So you feel like your legs are more covered, but you're showing just a little bit of skin right there. It was a long sleeve dress, like really fitted. And I said, and then we're going to add a leather jacket over it. That dress she talks about all the time. She absolutely loves it. But she was like, I would have never picked this up off of the rack and put it on because it had the slit. And so I just encourage women, like for whatever event that you're going to, is to push yourself to try things that you normally would not pick up. Just try it. You know, there's shapewear. There's lots of things out there that can help you feel more confident. But I hate to see women wear things that when I'm looking at it, I'm like, they're dressing for their age when they yes. don't do. Yes, that um, I've been a mother of the bride twice. And um, when I would go to Saks or Neiman or wherever, which I don't always often shop there, but just for, and I would put in mother of the bride, everything that popped up, I was like, oh my goodness, no. So, so I totally know what you're saying. And I think having a source that can guide us through that, do you mind as we wrap this up, is there a way you can provide for the show notes, which I, I'm going to recommend everyone go to, it's where you're going to find everything we've discussed as well as how to get. Kenzie's course. Can you link to that episode with your mom? Yes, of course. I can definitely send you that over. Um, my mom, my mom had a style that was kind of all over the place. Like she would just, she would, she would mix like a random loft blouse with a pair of jeans that had maybe holes in them. And then she would do like a little clog and then put like a Gucci belt on. It that would just sound like me. Oh my it was all over the place. And <laughs> I was me. Like, you, you have to tone it down a little bit, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, I can definitely link that. It's a great video and it's super special that I got to do that for my mom. I love that. I can't wait to see it. Okay. So we're going to wrap this up. So I, everyone, I'm going to let you know that Kinsey said, if you use the code savvy and was it case sensitive or just S-A-V-V-Y? Does it need to be all cap? S-A-V-V-Y is fine. Okay, that there will be some sort of um, perk or discount for the course. Can you tell us, is it a masterclass or what? what is it in person? Is it already recorded or 
So it's a six part video series that teaches you how to find your style, how to build a capsule wardrobe, how to dress for your body type and how to master the art of styling. And really what it's all about is making fashion feel super easy and accessible. I use a plus size model. I use a petite model to really show you what things look like on different body types. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a special project. It took me over eight months to, you know, prepare and film it and edit it. And it's just something that I'm super passionate about. And basically I take all of my tips that I teach my clients and I put them in long form content. Each video is anywhere from seven to 15 minutes long. So it's super digestible and you have lifetime access. You can go back and watch the videos if you need like a refresher. Um, and they have links to all the items that I recommend and I feature for both plus size, standard size, and petite. Oh, I love that. Okay. Now, do you also offer, like if I said, Kenzie, I just want you to coach me for X number of, as long as I need it, do you offer that as well? Yeah. So my most popular service is virtual consultations with clients from all over the world. Um, I do hour long consultations. I do two hour closet cleanouts where we do a consultation plus a clean out of your closet. Um, and then I have reoccurring clients after those sessions where we actually try on clothes together virtually and I help them style pieces currently in their wardrobe or any new items that they've purchased. And I've had huge success for my clients who feel much more confident about their style, much more confident in their choices of shopping. Um, and if you want like more personalized one-on-one, -on -one, I do personal shopping as well, but most of my clients do the virtual sessions and they get a lot of great information from it. I want to say that I'm going to look into this because I would like to give that as a gift to, <laughs> I have three daughters and they're all just beautiful, but two aren't as concerned about like when we go to weddings as a family, you know, they're not as concerned and I might say, okay, we need to, you know, go shopping. And, and I think that's a good gift to give someone who may not care as much, but still need to know the basics moving yeah. forward where, where the money that you spend on clothing and accessories is going to work for you. And I think that's the beauty of what you're doing. You're working with women individually. So, oh my goodness. Okay. I can't, I can't wait to look at all this. So go to the show notes. Everything will be here. Follow Kenzie. She has a website, a TikTok, and Instagram, Styling with Kenzie, K-E-N-Z-I-E. Kenzie, you are a delight and you are, I'm so grateful that you joined us today and I'll be talking with you because I want you to help me because I need, I need to, I feel like I'm just like you described your mom all over the map and I really want to hone in and just have a sophisticated style that speaks to me. So thank you so oh. much for having me. And for your listeners, I like to leave this like little tidbit of just advice that it's not about being the most fashionable girl in the room. It's not about being the skinniest girl in the room. Mm -hmm. It's about walking into a room and feeling confident in your own personal style, whatever that looks like. You could have a wardrobe from Walmart. It doesn't matter. Don't lose confidence in the way that you're dressing. Really focus on walking into a room and just being able to be your most authentic self and feel good about what you're wearing. That's really what my goal is. And I always like to leave women with that message because I think as women, we are so hard on ourselves and we put so much pressure on ourselves and it's really not that serious, you know, like it's, it's really about learning to love ourselves exactly how we are, where we're at. And, and our style is a reflection of that. Oh, that's wonderful. Kenzie, Thank you. Thank you so very much. And oh. I hope you have a, a wonderful Christmas and um, I'll be having you back. You can come back on the Savvy Cast anytime. <laughs> Maybe you can come back at the first of the year and tell us what will be the trends for uh, um, spring love, 24. Yeah, I'd love that. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to meet you. You too, Kenzie. You have a beautiful day. Hi, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Savvy Cast. If you'll take the time to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, that would mean so much. As always, thank you for listening and have a blessed day.